Welcome back to another photography vlog from Tiff Tiff Studio. Today we have another super simple shoot set up with a more challenging edit. But that's okay because we are working with my favorite Photoshop feature, Gradients. I'm moving the sole light source further away from the product so the shadows are longer and more dramatic. It's nice to play up details like shadows when the setup is so simple to give the image more dimension and drama. Okay, now it's finally time to shoot. I wanted to angle the bottle even more, but it somehow ruined the placement completely. No worries, it's nothing that a lot more sticky tack can't fix. And for the next part, I'm not sure whether I'll add dramatic shadows as part of the shot or during the editing process. I'll shoot them now just in case. Any medium-sized board will give you large enough shadows. I'm using a painting canvas, but poster boards work just as well. The idea is to hold it opposite your light source to create the shadows. And that's pretty much all there is to this shot setup. I left the background color as uh, something light and neutral so it would be easier to add and manipulate colors to it later on. First off, there's way too much empty space around the bottle for something that size, so let's crop the image smaller. I'm using the crop tool and keeping the same image proportions. Next, I decided I do want to use the shadows I shot, but I didn't like the angle of the bottle in those shots. So I'm only going to copy and paste in the shadow areas into our working file. Once the positioning is set, create a mask on this new shadow layer and erase the background remnants. The shadow doesn't look much like a shadow since it's almost the same color as the wall, so let's darken it. Using Levels Adjustment on the Shadows layer, I'm going to drag the middle slider towards the right to darken slightly. Remember, you don't want it too dark because it's going to be bright and colorful later on. Next, I'll make a copy of this layer by holding down the Alt key and dragging from the shadow section in the image. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a separate video on Photoshop keyboard shortcuts. Time to change the angle. Press Command T on the keyboard for the transform function. This second shadow will go on the bottom. Let's clean up the shadow edge with the eraser tool and adjust the placement. Next, I'm using the patch tool and quickly smoothing out any dark spots, debris, and texture from the shadow areas. I noticed the bottle text had a harsh line of glare running through it, so let's replace that area with a section from a different image. I've just copied and pasted it into our working file, and using the transform tool, I'll adjust the size and placement to match. Then I'll create a mask and use the eraser tool with blurred edges to remove the edges. After that, go to Image, Adjustments, and click on Color Balance. I need to fix the new text since it looks a bit greencast right now. With the second look, the way the shadow falls on the new text will never blend it properly with our original bottle. So plan B is to just edit in each section of text separately, starting with the brand name. I'm making individual adjustments to each text section as needed, mostly reliant on curves and bubbles. Once one section is good to go, I'll make a copy of that layer and mask in the next section of text using the same adjustment techniques to blend it in. And I'll repeat this process until all sections of the text are replaced. After that, let's remove the text from the sides of the bottle. To do so, I'm using Polygonal Lasso Tool and selecting that area. I'll then make a new layer and use the brush tool of a lowered opacity to paint over the text until the section is blended well. I'll adjust the brush opacities as needed 
Usually the lower the percentage, the more useful it is for blending shadows and colors. And repeating the same process for this little bit of text on the right side as well. Now we have to change the background color to a brand color. The color chip is pulled up for reference. To change the color, we'll create a new hue saturation adjustment layer. Make sure colorize is checked and adjust sliders as needed to match the color reference. Next, we have to remove this color effect from the bottle since only the background color needs to be changed. Using the object selection tool, drag it roughly over the bottle and then hit delete on the mask of the hue saturation adjustment layer. The bottle looks a bit dark compared to the new background color now, so let's add a curves adjustment to lighten it up a bit. Next, I've pulled in some additional color references for the gradients. To create these gradients, I'm going to create a new gradients adjustment layer. First, I need to match the angle of the gradient to the bottom shadow. I also need to adjust the gradient width to match the shadow by moving the transparent slider towards the left. And then I'm also going to blending mode and choosing an option to deepen and emphasize the color. I went with multiply in the end. I'm opening up the window for the gradient adjustment layer again to revise the color. My goal is to match this gradient color to the pink color reference. I'm then going to make a copy of this gradient layer. Double clicking to change the color of this second gradient. This time I'm changing it to the yellow color and making the gradient a little wider than the shadow. The yellow color is making the first gradient color look orange. So let's mask out the bottom part of the yellow gradient using the eraser tool on a lowered opacity. Now let's create a new gradient adjustment layer for the top shadow area. Again, I'll need to change the angle of this gradient to match the top shadow. For this blending mode, I'll go with multiply once again. And now I'll open up this gradient layer again to change the gradient width to match the top shadow size better. I'm also going to lower the opacity of this layer so it's not so strong and not the exact same color as the bottom gradient. Make a copy of this gradient layer for the fourth and final gradient effect. This last gradient will match the yellow color. Working from the mask, use the eraser tool on a lowered opacity to remove the lower half so the pink color can show through more. And I'll go back to the pink gradient layer and do the same thing. Mask out the top half of this layer so the yellow color can show up better. After that, I'll pull in the color references one more time to make sure the colors are matching enough. With these references, I'll go back to each gradient adjustment layer and adjust as needed for the best effect. Thank you for tuning in and I hope you learned something new or valuable from this tutorial. If so, please consider subscribing if you haven't already and give this video a thumbs up to help the YouTube algorithm push it out to others. Thank you so much for your support and I will see you in the next one.